Hi there everyone, welcome to the wonderful world of paint pouring. My name is Ron. If you like what you hear today, make sure you press the like button. And if you want to see more videos when I create them, make sure you press the subscribe button. Thanks for that. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert in paint pouring. I'm far from it. But I've been doing it for a little while now and I've learned a few things along the way. I thought it would be useful to share some of those things with everybody in YouTube land. So if you're a beginner, beginner and wondering where to start, well, this video is for you. Now, I thought in this video I would share some of the things that I did when I set up my workspace. And I hope that you'll find those useful as well. Now, your workspace can be anywhere where there's space for you to be creative and messy. It could be a bedroom, a spare bedroom in your house. It could be the kitchen bench or dining room table. Or, like me, it could be just a space in the garage. Now, I quite like using the garage because I can be as messy as I like without worrying I'm going to ruin some furniture somewhere. But if you are inside the house, inside a bedroom or something, it would probably be a good idea to protect the floor some way because you will get paint on the floor. You may have a painter's drop sheet lying around that you can spread out or a piece of old lino. Anything that's going to cover the floor is going to save you grief down the track. Now I've just got a yuck concrete floor in the garage here. That's pretty dirty already, so I don't really care. And I get paint on the ground. Now the next thing is to have a really good surface to work on. I've got a really solid surface, about so one and a half meters by one meter, and I find that plenty to be creative on. Make sure though that it's level. With paint pouring, if your surface isn't level, and you've done this just wonderful creation and you've put it on the table and leave it to dry, if your surface isn't level, and you come back a few hours later, you may find that your lovely painting has slid off the side of the canvas and has pooled on the table next to it. You need to have a level surface. If you can get your table level right at the beginning, you'll save yourself endless grief when you start pouring your paints. Now, I just found my table online at an office furniture place. I just picked up a an office planning table. Planning tables tend to be quite high. I'm really tall, so I don't have to bend over and hurt my back. It's just at the right level for me to stand and, and do my thing without, without hurting any muscles around the place. But, uh, it also has adjustable legs on it, so I can just adjust those until my table is perfectly level. If your table isn't adjustable, you can just shove some bits of cardboard underneath table legs here and there until you can get your table perfectly level. Once you've done that, you don't need to worry anymore. Now, to protect the surface of the table, all I did was get some of this really thick plastic from one of those cheap shops. I think hardware stores sell them as well. It's really thick, heavy-duty plastic. The store I bought it from sold it as plastic tablecloth. They sell it by the meter. I just draped that over my table. It's a nice heavy weight. It sort of sticks a little bit to the table and it doesn't move while I'm painting or get any wrinkles in it. And when it's super grotty, I can just replace it with another piece. Easy peasy. So that's the surface taken care of, and that was probably my most expensive outlay at the beginning, other than um, paint, of course. But I think it's well worth the investment to get a, a really good surface to play, play on. Now, the next thing I was thinking about was where I was going to store all my paints and stuff. I just happened to have an old bookshelf, but you may be able to get one off Gumtree or a garage sale somewhere. Just a bookshelf. I've covered the, the shelves with a bit of plastic to protect them a little bit. And I've got plenty of room to stick all my paints and stuff on. We'll look at some of these in other videos. Then over here, I have my paint storing rack. 
Now this took me a little bit of time to figure out. And I must admit, the idea isn't mine. I found it elsewhere online, but I found it really, really useful. You'll find that once you start painting, you're going to get paintings everywhere and you're going to run out of space to, to put them all. And so once they were reasonably dry, I figured I could use, instead of um, buying one of these really expensive painting racks, um, I could use something like a, an old baby cot. Now, I didn't fork out money for an old one. I bought a new baby cot from Ikea. It was just over $100. Um, I turned it up on its end. So the rungs of the cot were on the sides. And I just had some MDF boards cut to size that I could just slide over the rungs and lay my paintings on them. And there's just enough space between each rung to fit my really thick canvases. I could fit about 30 or so paintings on that. I think that's really, really useful. Now to keep the dust out, I had one of these old bed sheets, an old bed sheet that I just drape around and it just keeps, keeps the dust out. So I find that I find that really 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 handy. Um, then another thing I had an issue with at the beginning were were insects. They can be a real pain, especially in the garage. With the garage door open, I get flies and cockroaches and all sorts of things flying in, and they find wet paint really really attractive. So if you don't protect your painting somehow while it's drying, you'll come back with flies and things stuck in it or lots of footprints if a mouse or something else has walked through it. You don't want to ruin a really good painting with having a fly stuck in the middle. So again, I went to my old faithful cheap shop and I found these really handy food covering net things, whatever you call them. I think they have a, a proper name, but I don't know what it is. But these ones are really huge and I can fit quite a a decent size painting under one of these. So I've done my painting, I just plonk it over the top, keeps all the flies and bugs out two or three days or four days if the weather's a bit cooler for the painting to dry sufficiently and then I can just take the cover off, put the painting somewhere else to finish drying properly and then I'll pop it in my, my rack for the painting to cure properly. Paintings can take a couple of weeks to cure properly. If I run out of space in my drying rack, I can take the really old paintings out, wrap them up and put them aside somewhere to make room for some new ones. So that's my paintings. Now to protect myself um, from paint, I don't wear good clothes like this. I wear my daggiest clothes out that I don't mind getting paint on. And I also have this beautiful, beautiful, lovely apron that I wear while I'm painting just to wipe my hands on and drop paint on to my heart's content. And then I have rubber gloves too to protect my hands. Saves a lot of hassle afterwards trying to get paint out from underneath the fingernails. So really that's that's basically it. That's all, all you need to start your painting. A good surface protected with some uh, plastic a uh, baby cot tipped up on its side with MDF shelves to put your dry paintings on. Something to cover your painting with while it's drying. And then something to protect yourself while you are painting. And of course somewhere to store all of your bits and pieces. Now I think that's about enough for today's video. I just thought I'd run through just those few things to how to set up your space things that I found useful and I hope that you found it useful as well. In the next video I'm going to look at all things canvas. How you go about preparing your canvas so that it's ready to throw some paint on. So if you'd like to see that one make sure you subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button and again if you like this video press the, the like button as well. So, I hope you got something out of today's video and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Happy paint pouring!